Hey, what's up? I wanted to show you uh, three different monitors I got from Field World. Kind of which ones I'm using, what I think think of them, what's the differences. There's a lot of monitors, especially these kind of lower end budget monitors out there these days. So uh, if you're looking for, I guess, a cheap, affordable monitor, but you're not really sure which one to pick, uh, then there's three here that I can talk about. And the prices start from this side. This is 160 bucks uh, as of uh, March 2019. This one, the M5A or MA5, uh, this one is 170 bucks, and this one is the FW279, and it's the S version is actually 340. But if you get the the two FW279, and it's identical like this, except it's missing basically two, two SDI inputs, and that one's 270. So all of these monitors are full 1080p displays, so they display nice, crisp, you know, all that HD goodness details. Uh, but they all kind of specialize in one area. So the first one, the T7, uh, specializes in the fact that it's made from uh, aluminum. Uh, so it's fairly light, as you can see, nice and thin, but, uh, but it's very sturdy. Um, so that's the good thing about it. This one uh, specializes in the fact that it's the uh the smallest of them all it's really very very compact it's a five inch display but as you'll see there isn't doesn't extend much outside of it and it's very thin very light like i mean super light i don't even know how much it is but it just feels like nothing now it is made out of plastic so i guess it's not as durable but then again i've used this monitor the most probably uh on my gimbals and things like that because it is so uh so light um, and never, never really had a problem with it. Uh, never dropped it, but again, you know, I take care of my gear, uh, so I don't have any accidents. Um, so that's the the thing that the specialty of this one. And then this one, the FW279, uh, specializes in the fact that it's very, very bright. This one's 2200 nits, so super bright. Uh, so this is like if whenever I'm working outside in broad daylight and I don't want to have any issues, or, you know, or bother putting in sunshades and things like that then this is the the monitor that i'll take so i actually used it for the last few months i've been kind of using it more and more uh, especially when i'm outside uh, doing any kind of gimbal work because then again it's it's, it's very very easy to see in broad sunlight now like i said the version that i have is the s version and the only difference is that it has the sdi inputs the other version is identical it just won't have the sdi inputs we'll just have hdmi so if you don't care about sdi uh, then you can save yourself, um, you know, quite a bit of money. Uh, when it comes to the other monitors and their brightness, they're both the same. They're 450 nits, so about, you know, kind of, I would say, uh, industry standard right now. They're not dim, but they're not ultra bright either. Uh, but they're, they're, you know, they're, they're plenty bright for most situations. But like I said, in broad sunlight, you probably want, would want to put on uh, like a little shade. This is the shade that they provide you with. Uh, you can put it on this one, and this one also comes with its own shade. Um, other things I like about it is that, you know, this one is, like I said, solidly built, has HDMI input, output, has DC in, has headphones output uh, out there so you can monitor your audio. You have custom buttons here, custom, basically two custom buttons, and otherwise you have your menu uh, buttons and kind of buttons for navigating the menu. So you can customize these two buttons, whatever you want. Let's say if you want focus speaking or you want histogram or you want false color, which all of these monitors have those features or zebras and they also all have that. Uh, and uh, and so, yeah, so you can kind of quickly turn it on and on. Uh, they also all will display your audio meters. So if you want to assign that to one of the buttons, that, that will also work. Um, there's a quarter 20 attachment here on the top. So you can attach it from the top. Uh, nothing here on this side, and then there's another quarter 20 on the bottom, and then you have your USB for firmware upgrades. And otherwise, it's kind of straightforward monitor, this, this T7. It, it displays, you know, nice nice image, full 1080p. It's not the brightest, but then again, it's very sturdy, very, very well built. This one, I think, is kind of nice for when you're doing a lot of kind of run and gunning, or with especially with a gimbal where you want to keep the weight down, because this thing is super light. Uh, I mean, it's it's. A, I, I don't know how much it is, but it's, yeah, it's very very light. Uh, I also like the fact that even though it's such a small size, they were able still to squeeze in the two custom buttons here on the top. Then you have your menu button and the buttons for navigating the menu. Then you have a quarter twenty uh, on the top here attachment. One here on this side, which is again uh, nice, and then another quarter twenty on the bottom. Um, and another feature you have up here is, uh, you know, you have the headphones output, but you also have 
DC 8.4 volt out. So if you're, let's say, putting under any of these batteries to power the monitor, you can then split that and share that power uh, to your camera. So if you're working with like Sony A6300, 6500 or 6400, which don't have the best battery life, then you can connect your dummy battery to this and then this way you'll power the camera for a long time. Another cool thing they did with the battery plate is that this one has both Sony NPF style batteries and LPE6 Canon batteries. It basically accepts both. So just once this side is for Canon, this side is for Sony, put it in there, slide the battery, and then there's a nice little release button so you don't pinch your finger when you take out the batteries. Um, otherwise, like, like I said, nice small little display and it's 1080p. Um, so again, it's very nice and sharp. This one is, um, is like I said, if, if you want something that's like super, super bright outside, uh, or even if you should work in a studio, but you have a lot of stu bright studio lights, then this is probably the way to go um, because it's 2200 nits. As far as the features, uh, it has um, here uh, also two custom buttons, your menu, your buttons for navigating the, the menu. Uh, you also have, uh, like I said, in this one, the S version, the SDA connections, and then you have the two HDMI connections. So it's pass through for both HDMI and SDI. Uh, you have, you don't have any mounts here. You only have a mount here on the bottom, quarter 20. So that's I almost wish that they added like another quarter 20 attachment from the top because I know a few times when I used this it was more it's just more comfortable to have it attached from the top um, when I kind of wanted to have it in a low mode uh, as far as the battery plate you can get it with different battery plates and you can also get these battery plates that are like I said they're easily available online they're very cheap because you can interchange it you just take out these four screws and put a different battery mount the one I have here accepts the Sony NPF style batteries Again, nice button for uh, the, the release of the battery. Um, otherwise, there's nothing else here on the bottom. And then on this side, we have your USB connections for firmware upgrades, your headphone connection, and then you have your DCN uh, connection, which is 12 volt will accept. Uh, and like I said, when it comes to image quality, all of them are, are, are great. Uh, you're not gonna be using any of these kind of field monitors to do like critical you know, color work. But then again, those kind of monitors, you're talking, and thousands of dollars and they're usually very big monitors and they're something you'd use in a studio but this is plenty enough if you want to pull your focus you want to see your exposure like i said you have all these different tools like false colors histograms zebras all that stuff all, all those tools are built into it um so they're, they're great in that respect and they're all nice you know sharp 1080p displays uh and they will all accept uh 4k signals and different things but th this one I believe accepts, that's the reason why they put 4K on there, accepts more 4K video formats. Because I know some people had problems with, not, not these ones, but one of the earlier field world monitors when they were connecting like the GH5 and 24 Hertz mode, uh, it would not work. It would work if you are outputting 4K signal over like 20 point, you know, 30 frames per second or 25 frames per second, but not in 24. So now this one's changed. But I also, I, I don't, I think I've used it, uh, not this one, but I know I've used this one in 24 with my uh, uh, Panasonic GH5 and a GH4, and I didn't have a problem. So, so I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. But don't quote me on it if you, you guys want double check it. But anyways, these are the three monitors from Field World. Different prices, different features, uh, and hopefully this will uh, help you guys make a better decision if you, in case you are looking for a monitor for your your camera rig, and also kind of see which features are more important to, uh, to you guys. Anyways, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. And until then, uh, if you want to follow what I do and I see other videos like this or posts, then join me on my website at tomantosfilms.com. And while you're there, subscribe to my newsletter so you're, you stay notified of future posts. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.